Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome. Hello. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, fantastic. Great afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining WCAP's Global Advocacy and Diplomacy Program. For those of you that don't know me, I am Maritza Adonis, and I serve as our founding chair for our working group. We're super excited to have you join us for our cultural diplomacy program, GAD Lingo. For those of you that have joined us in the past, our GAD Lingo is our most popular event where we provide our WCAPS members and our allies with opportunity to engage into a new language and also learn about a new culture. We've had the honor of working with several embassies in the past. We've covered Spanish, Haitian Creole, Japanese, Arabic, and French, but some of our most popular languages were returning by popular demand. French was one of them. And so we made sure that we reached out to the France embassy to make sure that we could bring you guys the original French. And so we're super excited to have two esteemed guests today. We'll have Mrs. Catherine Gebhard from the French Embassy Cultural, Service, Cultural Services and Miss Agnes Tuncara, who will serve as our guest speaker. Um, I will, before we go and transition over to Ms. Gebhard to give us a little bit of information about what the Cultural Services Center does at the French Embassy in the United States, we want you guys to go ahead and share in the chat box where you're joining us from. And yeah, we'll get started with that. We just want to, you know, this is very interactive, so feel free to get um, chatting in the chat box and We'll give two of you guys who's not shy and willing to just quickly introduce yourself um, and share why you're joining today and what you hope to get out of the program. And we'll give you that opportunity. So I see Ava, Ramira, Alyssa, any one of you that want to just quickly come off mute, introduce yourself, where you're joining us from and what you're hoping to get from today's program. Bonjour, right, Ava. Ramira. I, Ramira, okay, over to you first. <laughs> uh, I am in Tallahassee, Florida. Um, currently, I am in intermediate, I mean, intermediate French class, so I have a little bit of input knowledge of uh, French, but I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, any of our other participants want to quickly introduce themselves? I think I see Ms. Smith. Over to you. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm Ava Smith. I work for the State Department and the Educational and Cultural Affairs Division, or Bureau actually, in the Office of International Visitors. Um, I have a, a lifelong interest in France and food and the language. I'm, I'm baseline beginner in, in French, so I don't know if I'm over my head or not. <laughs> I also sit I also sit on the, the board of um, of white caps, women in color, and advancing peace and security. So, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for joining. All right. So, I'll quickly introduce our esteemed guests for today. Our first guest will be providing us greetings and some information about the cultural services. Uh, Ms. Kathleen Gebhard, um, after six years as an international relations officer in major French universities, Ms. Kathleen Gebhard has been working since 2018 as a higher education attache for the French Embassy in New York. She's in charge of supporting cooperation efforts within the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut tri-state area of developing the community colleges in France program and of managing the Thomas Jefferson Fund. Since 2020, she is also strengthening virtual exchange programs. Our next speaker who will follow, Ms. Gebhardt, is Ms. Agnes Duncara. Ms. Agnes Duncara was born in Senegal, where she grew up before arriving in France for college. She holds a DEA in economics from the University of Paris Dauphine and began her professional career in the energy sector in France, where she worked on issues of sustainable development and its impact on the energy sector. She relocated to Boston for family reasons and her love of French and French speaking cultures led her to the Alliance Francaise 
where she taught French to adults and children before taking over the Department of Language courses. During her time in Boston, she spearheaded the first French heritage programs in elementary schools targeted towards the important Haitian community. That's fantastic. Our, our first introduction to French was from the, the Haiti embassy last year. So full circle. We love this. Yeah. Um, for 10 years, she headed the extracurricular activities department at the French American School in New York, where she promoted numerous French language programs to students, parents of students, and the entire Westchester community. Since 2018, she has served as the program officer of the French Heritage Language Program. The French Heritage Language Program, or known as the FHLP's, mission is to promote the Francophonie and the teaching of French as a language of heritage in the United States. The program aims to serve not only French-speaking newcomers, for all of you guys here that may have a little bit of French-speaking experience, um, from recent immigration African and Caribbean countries with no limited or no access to French education in the U.S., but the programs also focus on French-speaking American communities long established in the various territories. Welcome, Ms. Gebhardt. I'll turn it over to you to share a little bit more about the cultural separate services. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Ms. Adonis, uh, for uh, this great introduction. So what do we do and where, what's the kind of context and yes, the uh, and I are working in. We're part of the French embassy in the US. And of course, there are many different services. There's more the political service. We call it chancellerie. I'm a little bit dropping French words here, as this is also a French language class. Then we have an economic service, a press service, one that we call the science office. And we have the cultural services of the French embassy. At the cultural services, our boss is the cultural counselor, and under his management and vision, we promote the best of French arts, and, um, and the best of French arts, literature, cinema, that's really what, when you think cultural, that's maybe the first things that will come to your mind. But we also promote French language in different ways during dual language programs, etc., and higher education across the US. We're based in New York City, uh, but we're also based in Washington DC and eight other cities across the country. So it was great to see that, you know, you also come from across the country, I saw some Alabama, I saw some California. Our, offer, our other offices are in Boston, Chicago, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Atlanta, Houston, New Orleans, and Miami. So we are also trying to be across the country and having our representatives in these consulates and um, missions. Let me say a little bit more about our film, TV, and digital media department. One of the things, for instance, they would be organizing is something that's called Films Own the Green. That's New York-based outdoor film festival we're having during the summer, and that's something you can see on the picture here, actually, where people are sitting outside and watching the French film for free and it's a program, for instance, we do in partnership with the uh, New York City Parks. We also have something that we call the Tony Film Festival. It's actually where we bring French films into universities. The universities can apply and then receive a grant and support from us to show French films in the universities. And that's happening across uh, all across the country. In addition to that, something uh, French immersion. So that's more about actually having VR and like virtual reality and, and these kind of things and see how, how that works and to explain to people, okay, how does the French state support virtual reality and why do we think it's important to promote that? And that's something the colleagues from the film, TV and digital media um, department would do. Then we have our department of books and ideas. One of the things they do is organize something that we call the Night of Philosophy and Ideas. It's one of our major events in the year, and now it ex actually exists um, in most of the our locations I mentioned earlier. And it's really one night, sometimes in some locations from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. with short 20-minute talks and where people would, French people, but also American people, would present ideas and approaches to life and philosophy or from a scientific perspective. And engaging the public in these events is always very important for us. So we're very happy 
that we see over 15,000 uh, 15, people attend these events across the country. And of course, this year we did it all virtual. But the Books and Ideas Department is also actually a bookstore. We're having in New York and that operates online now and where you can order books, French books online and easier than maybe through other ways. It's French authors on tour. And that's really, again, where we work with libraries across the country or, book or French departments and universities or other institutions who would be interested in hosting a French author and have a talk with him or her or them. And uh, for instance, and the idea is always to talk about ideas and have exchanges between Americans and French people. Um, the next department is our Department of Visual and Performing Arts. It's here, they, they work for, for instance, they have sometimes priorities like the design program, but they also have contemporary theater and dance and uh, really contemporary art and visuals. And as you can see, we're not so much working on promoting uh, Renoir or Monet or these kind of painters and these kind of artists that are well-established and well-known across the US uh, because we think they don't need us anymore, but uh, our work at the embassy and the cultural services is more focusing on upcoming artists, um, younger artists who actually need still some name recognition and would not, yeah, who try to to exist in the conversation, which is always very interesting. And in the next department, our K through 12 and higher education service department, it's actually, Agnes knows that much better than I do because she's part of, uh, of that with uh, the French Heritage Language Program. And, but we also support dual language education in public schools across the US. And, um, and from the higher education side, one of the programs that I'm in charge is our program Community College in France, where we actually think that international education, international mobility is important for everyone, including, of course, community college students, and where we try to make opportunities for them more accessible, and where we try to make uh, it, yeah, it's our cost is also a big, uh, big question in any case, so we develop um, grant programs around that. And that is my very short and <laughs> brief presentation about what is what we're all doing at the cultural services. And in any case, for us, it's, yeah, we, we always try to reach out to new audiences, figure out how we can connect and uh, which part of, of France and to, to present France in a diverse way and um, to make sure we're not only talking about Paris, but to make sure we're also having other regions of France as part of the conversation. Feel free to follow us on social media. And I think you have also my contacts and in any case, you'll have Anya's contacts. So I'll be happy to say more about something if, if that were of interest. Merci, Mrs. Catherine Gebhardt for that wonderful presentation. As Ms. Catherine mentioned, you guys can make sure we're following um, the Culture Center at French Culture US so that we can stay abreast of all their amazing programming. I know that they're just coming off from celebrating their Francophony celebrations. And so there might be a couple of things that you guys can join in. And if not, definitely um, sign up for their newsletter so you can stay abreast of future. Thank you so much, Ms. Catherine. We will transition right over to you, Ms. Tunkara. We're super excited to, to get into culture. So over to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Catherine, for this introduction. Um, thank you very much, uh, Marissa, for the introduction. Uh, thank you to the WCATS for organizing this event. And thank you all for taking the time to join us today. Uh, the, it's a very ambitious program uh, in an hour and a half, but I'm going to do my best to um, give you a sense of what France is today. And I'm just going to say I'm coming from my own personal place, which be, could be different from someone else. France today is a very diverse place. Um, like uh, Maritza said, I was born in Senegal. So I am Senegalese and African, but I spent as much time is in Senegal as I spent in France. So I am French too. And I also spend a lot of time in the US. So I would say a third in each country. So this is where I'm coming from. And I think it's important because <clears throat> obviously everybody experiences things differently. 
Um, what I'm going to try to do today is to be exhaustive, even though it's going to be hard. I'm going to talk a little bit about geography and history, which is a huge part of what France is today. And then I'm going to look at a few symbols and things that you might know about what we call today the French Republic. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about culture and hopefully we'll get to speak a little bit of French. Uh, I know that some of you um, already have a little bit of experience with that. Um, so <clears throat> first, just a question and we can just put it in the chat. When we say France, what's the first thing or the first person <clears throat> that comes to mind for you? <clears throat> I'll be just curious to see, um, you know, uh, it could be Edith Piaf, the legendary singer, <clears throat> or um, I don't know if you guys are watching any movies in French. I'm sure you heard about Lupin, which stars amazing Omar Sy, uh, Senegalese um, French citizen from Senegalese descent. Um, the Fabuleux Destin d'Amélie Poulain, which was a classic. And uh, Emily in Paris, this show that everybody's talking about. I know a few French people are actually a little upset about all the cliché. Uh, she's wearing a beret and... Uh, <clears throat> Or, you know, Charles Aznavour, maybe, who's a singer from Armenian descent. Once again, um, reminding us all that the, the history of French is rich and diverse. Uh, if you're into soccer, I don't know if you heard about uh, their soccer teams. I put the female uh, soccer team as well because they're doing extremely well. And as you can see, this is what France looks like today. Or maybe Christine Lagarde, who's the former International Monetary Fund director. And finally, um, uh, Sibet Ngai, we share a last name. She's same thing, uh, French uh, and Senegalese, uh, former communication director and campaign director for um, uh, President Emmanuel Macron. So like I said, uh, France, um, you've probably heard of it from one way or another. I don't know if we can look a little bit at the answer you put in the chat as if as um, you know, what comes to mind when we talk about France? Um, um, so Miss Shana Cancy says that there are a lot of things for her. Um, yeah. She said that for her, ha for her is like the schools there have half days on Wednesdays and Saturdays and big <laughs> lunches with families. Can you tell us some more about that? Yeah, we will we'll definitely talk a lot about food because that's at the center of the culture. Uh, you know, it's a big tourist destination. It's the number one tourist destination in the world actually with so many things to see, but it's also a very strong economy um, with many sectors, you know, the classical industry and uh, luxury sector, but today um, in biotech, uh, the French tech is doing extreme, extremely well as well. Um, in terms of research, they're almost leading the number of um, Nobel prizes um, with Marie Curie, who's the woman, the only one who got two Nobel prizes, one in chemistry and one in physics. Um, it's also the study. I don't know if uh, you guys are students, have uh, children who are about to go to college. It's my case. So I love the idea that you can get a high quality education for so much less than in the United States. You can see here the amount, um, the proportion that uh, the government subsidizes um, in France. And if anything else, you've heard about the language, obviously, I'm sure a lot of you took a few years. It's the fifth world language. <clears throat> it's um, most of the French speakers today are in Africa. It is gonna be the first French uh, speaking con uh, continent uh, in a few years. Um, it's the official language in more than 32 states. Um, and um, it's also the second most taught foreign language after English. Um, and in diplomacy, it is the second language. Um, so you know, if you're thinking about taking French or maintaining your French, you have many, many reasons to do so. Um, so let's uh, dig a little bit into um, geography and history. Uh, you can put your question in the chat. I'm happy to answer them as we go. Uh, so starting with geography, um, as you can see, we have the mainland, which we call it l'hexagon because of its shape. It's a little bit shaped like an hexagon. So we typically refer to the mainland as l'hexagon, surrounded by six European countries and five natural borders. Um, in terms of climate, you have a variety of, uh, of climate. Uh, if you go to Brittany, 
it's going to be mild. Uh, you get some very hot, cold and dry weather in the east in Lorraine and you know, beautiful weather, obviously, in the southeast um, with the French Riviera being the, one of the most known places. Uh, that leads to all kinds of landscapes, and that's one of the beauty of, of this country. You can go to, to the sea uh, or to the mountains if you want to go in the Alps. And obviously, you know, uh, if you want to venture in Burgundy, uh, all the, the vineyards. Um, France is the mainland, like Zagon, but it's also all these dumb tom. Um, the dum tom are the département territoire d'outre-mer. As you can see, uh, it's mainly the Caribbean, it's islands, the French Caribbean. Um, this is part of France. Uh, these, the people who live in these uh, islands are French citizens. And um, that obviously is the result of uh, history, a uh, history that was marked, I would say, by three big periods the period where we have kings, which I call the monarchy. Um, and then this regime was toppled by uh, a big revolution where the people took over. And uh, after a short period where monarchy was restored, we went back to a more democratic regime uh, marked with different republics um, that led today to what we call the, the fifth republic. And that's the system that's in place today in France. So that's one of the um, main, um, main thing about France, you know, monarchy, the revolution, and then a, a democratic regime. Uh, another big uh, piece of French history is obviously colonialism uh, with two waves. The first wave that targeted mainly uh, North America and Asia a little bit. And the second wave that led them to um, Africa. Um, and uh, France was uh, actually the second uh, largest um, colonial empire after the British Empire. Um, I'm not gonna uh, spend too much time on it, but I would say I'm the result of French colonialism. I grew up speaking French and that history is not perfect, but today it is a heritage and uh, a lot of uh, Authors from uh, French speaking country always say that, uh, you know, we cannot deny that history, but we want to move forward. And French is one of the things um, we have now, and it's, it's our own. And if you go to uh, French speaking countries around the world, um, French is usually the national language, and they make it their own by adding a few local expressions. Um, this is the Mois de la Francophonie, the whole month of March. And they're actually soon releasing a dictionary of uh, the Francophonie with all those expressions that you find in different countries. So as a result of this history, you have people speaking French all around the world on all continents with English. It's the only other language that is spoken on all continents. Um, we're talking about um, more than 300 million people speaking French. Um, and uh, another, um, another result of this history is all these French words that you find in the English language. I don't know if uh, you guys are familiar with a few of those. Uh, these are all French words that made their way in the English language um, for historical reason. And it usually translates that. Déjà vu, for example, means already seen, literally. May day, in, in French, it's mede, it means help me. Uh, début means beginning. Um, I mean, abajour is not here, but abajour that we use for uh, to cover the lamp, it's basically uh, lower the day. Uh, and I could go on and on. There is actually more than 10,000 English words that come from French. And the explanation is a little bit historical with the this uh, Duke of Normandy who uh, claimed uh, England uh, just because he wanted to. And um, there was a great influence of France over England for more than 300 years. Um, so that's it for geography and history. It was really fast, but I did my best. Uh, now I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I call the symbols of the French Republic. 
like I said before, um, today France is a democratic uh, system with a president and a parliament that are both elected by citizens. Um, the system is a little similar to uh, the American system with a two head chamber here, a national assembly, which would be the house and then a Senate um, and a government uh, that is de designated by the president. Um, other symbols of the Republic, um, you know, uh, we have obviously the flag, the blue, white and red flag that uh, recognizable. Um, white is the color of royalty and it is surrounded by blue and red, which are the colors of Paris and the color of the French Revolution. Uh, the national anthem, which is called the Marseillaise, uh, named after Marseille, that little town in the south of France, is actually a very violent and um, war song. It was a song uh, that was sung during the revolution, but it just stayed and is still the national anthem. The rooster is also something that usually associated with France. Uh, it both means rooster and Gallic in, uh, in Latin, and you'll find it on a lot of uh, sports uh, brand and events. Uh, finally, Marianne, France is actually represented by a woman, Marianne, which is the goddess of liberty. She's usually wearing a cape, which we call the Phrygian cape or the liberty cape, cap, cape, cap, a cap. Um, this was actually worn by freed slaves back in ancient Rome. So the whole symbolic of liberty, once again, it's really big there. Uh, you find Marianne again on a lot of logo for um, French public institution. Um, the motto of France is Liberté, Égalité, Fraternité, which translates to freedom, equality, and brotherhood. Once again, the French Revolution is at the center of what France is today with um, the Declaration of Human and Citizen Rights established in 1789 being the focal point um, with this fundamental principle that all men are born and remain free and have equal rights. Another big symbol that you probably all know is Bastille Day, which is on July 4th. Um, it refers to uh, the capture of the Bastille on July 4th, 1789. And uh, it also, uh, um, it also uh, refers to uh, Federation Day, which was celebrated the year after in honor of uh, the French Revolution. Um, so that was uh, history, politics, and geography. Um, now let's dig a little bit into the, the culture. Uh, I have to start with food, right? Uh, as you know, food is a big part of French culture. Um, the gastronomical meal of France have already been registered by uh, UNESCO, which is a UN body, as intangible cultural heritage of humanity. And um, you know, I read a little bit about it. It's not just about the food, it's about respecting the food, um, respecting where the food comes from, valuing uh, high quality products, and also the process of just sitting down and taking the time to enjoy a meal that's usually very long with, with families and friends. Uh, wine, obviously, um, is a big part of that too. Um, there are more than 16 major wineries in France. Cheese, um, you know, if you want to eat French cheese, brie is not it at all. As you can see, there are many, many, more than 300 different kinds of uh, cheese in France, and the French people do not mess with their cheese. Um, they eat it with baguette and only baguette, no crackers. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, uh, that's, uh, that's one of the, the main thing about uh, the French culture. That meal. This is the typical uh, seven course French meal. It's not every day, obviously, it's for big occasions, but you always start with an aperitif, what we call the appetizer, which is you know, finger foods with an alcoholic drink. And then the entrée, l'entrée, which is actually not the main course, it's the appetizer. So in French, l'entrée is the appetizer or l'hors d'oeuvre, same thing in French. Um, the, the entrée in English is the main course. We call it le plat de résistance. And it comes after the fish, 
once again, this is not the everyday meal, but on a big occasion, there is a fish meal that comes before the main course. And then salad, not necessarily there, but um, sometimes it's served. And always, always at all meals, cheese and bread, and then a dessert. Uh, this is just a little fun fact. This is actually real cafeteria food in France. So this love of food, good food, and taking the time to eat start very early. Uh, as you can see, on all meals, they have um, an appetizer, une entrée, comme on dit en français, a main meal, it's usually um, a protein and a, um, a vegetable, always some kind of cheese. It's either cheese, like this is a camembert, this is a vache qui rit, or uh, a yogurt, and then the dessert. This is, this is the everyday meal in France. Um, this slide is in French, but it's just to give you an idea of how the French people eat usually. Breakfast is usually not a really big meal. It's coffee with bread or croissant. Um, and then, you know, lunch and dinner, a protein with a vegetable, uh, le goûter, which is the snack, usually reserved to children. Uh, they take it between four and five because dinner is a little later. It's more like between seven and nine. Um, so that's, uh, that's it for food. Um, another big part of um, French culture is obviously all the historical monuments that you can visit. There's a lot of history. I put the, the dates there just to give you a sense of how, uh, how old these constructions are. Um, it took two centuries to, big, to, to build Notre Dame. It's been rebuilt as, as we speak, which is wonderful. Uh, L'Arc de Triomphe, obviously, uh, the Palace of Versailles that hosted uh, three uh, kings of France um, and the Eiffel Tower, of course, that uh, hopefully you guys have seen or will see sometime. Uh, but it's not only in Paris, you know, these hist historical monument are also uh, outside of Paris, if you venture a little bit, there are beautiful things to see with a lot of history. Uh, I just put a few here. Uh, Le Mont Saint-Michel in Normandy, which dates from back, which date back from the 10th century. Uh, Le Palais des Papes, that's in Avignon, that's the south of France. If you get to go in the summer, venture outside of France and go to Avignon, there is a lot of arts and theater festival that are open to the public all summer in this uh, very old uh, castle uh, and the Chateau de la Loire, which is uh, in terms of architecture, a uh, French Renaissance masterpiece from back in the 16th century. Um, museums, another um, huge part of French culture. Same thing, uh, these are all in Paris, but there are museums all around the countries. Uh, Le Musée du Louvre, obviously, uh, built in, I don't even know how to say this date in English, 1190. Um, Le Musée d'Orsay, which is a, actually a former train station that was transformed into a, a museum, beautiful museum for art uh, from the 19th and 20th century. And if you're more into modern art, um, Beaubourg, which is uh, in the Quartier des Halles in the center of Paris, would be your place to go for modern art. Um, I cannot, you know, not talk about luxury, fashion, and haute couture. Same thing, history is the common theme here. Uh, the Louis Vuitton house was started in 1821. Um, well, no, Louis Vuitton was born in 1821. Um, so this is back from the 19th century. Chanel, Yves Saint Laurent, um, Jean-Paul Gaultier more recently, but there is so many other uh, representative of uh, the, the French uh, luxury fashion and haute couture. Um, literature, um, French people read a lot. They read a lot of book in French. There is a lot, I think it's one of the country that translate the most in French from other countries, from other languages. And, you know, um, it goes from Victor Hugo with the, his famous uh, Les Miserables book, all the way to uh, Alain Mabankou, who is originally from Congo, but 
today sits at the prestigious Collège de France, which is one of the biggest literary um, authority in France. He's a writer and he teaches at uh, UCLA. Uh, I also uh, put in there Leila Slimani, who is from Morocco and who today represents uh, France in the Francophonie. She's the ambassador um, for the Francophonie, uh, President Macron ambassador. Um, so many others, uh, Aimé Césaire, who was from Martinique, one of those islands that is one of the French territory in the French Caribbean, huge poet, uh, writer, and a big critic of colonialism. He started the black movement in the French speaking country along with the former president of Senegal, Leopold Sédar Senghor. And he wrote extensively on being black in France and colonialism. Um, but you also have Simone de Beauvoir, which is uh, uh, the symbol of feminism in France, but also um, about France. Um, Leila Semiani is actually also an author. She wrote this amazing book, uh, scary, but amazing. If you have a chance to read it in English or in French, in English, it's the perfect nanny. And in French, it's chanson douce. It's an amazing, uh, an amazing book. I highly recommend. Um, this is Aimé Césaire, the author I was talking about, who, like I said, wrote extensively, but um, I like his quote about culture. He says that culture is everything. It's not just like we talked about, you know, uh, monument and history. It's the way we dress, the way we carry our heads, the way we walk, the way we tie our shoes, not only the fact of writing books or building houses. I really like that quote because it takes me to actually uh, what I call etiquette, um, which is uh, something you want to research a little bit before you travel. And I think today people are really um, more relaxed about all of these things, but uh, it's just good to know out of respect to understand uh, the culture of a country before you go. Uh, I would say that there is three themes, the relationship with time, um, the way of communicating and the body language. Time is important in France. People take time to eat. Uh, personal time is personal, meaning uh, French people will not email after work. It's almost um, rude to send an email after work hours because it's their time, their family time, and you, they respect it. They want you to respect it. Um, as you probably know, they don't joke with their vacation. Everybody gets five weeks of paid vacation and it's usually July and August. Um, they take time to eat. I remember when I was working in Paris, a two hour lunch break is completely uh, normal. And because once again, we have to go through the appetizer, the entree and the cheese and the dessert. Um, so that's time. Uh, the second thing is the, the body language. They do speak with their hands. Um, they're more into your space. I'm speaking from an American perspective here. They want to shake your hand and they want to look you in the eye when they do that. Uh, they will be closer to you that you would might like if you are American. And you know, speaking with your hands and your whole body is actually a good thing. Um, saying hello when you enter a restaurant, a boutique, or just meet someone, it's also very important. And finally, uh, in the workplace, the way of communicating is very different. I was uh, myself, uh, in my experience with that, um, very uh, surprised uh, because I tend to be direct and Americans are more into uh, nuances. The French people are, are usually very direct. And when you speak, they will interrupt. It's not a mark of disrespect, it's actually a mark of interest. Uh, French dinners and meals are very lively with conversation, disagreement, and um, it's a good thing. <clears throat> um, I found this poster online and uh, it's just a few of the things, but once again, uh, younger people tend to be more tolerant um, to um, people visiting and not understanding the, the culture. But a few things here, you know, uh, you don't start eating before the hostess say bon appetit and start. Um, bread belongs on the table and not on the plate. And uh, you just cut it with your hand. You don't eat bread before the meal with butter. <laughs> that's something that surprised me a lot. You eat it 
with your meal, it goes with it. And um, you don't ask for seconds. The hostess will, you know, will look at your plate and know if it's time for you to get more. Um, at the restaurant, uh, the tip that's very American, uh, you don't have to tip, it's nice, but you don't have to. Uh, the servers are usually paid, they have a fixed salary and uh, they don't necessarily accept a tip and people tend to, maybe younger people split the bill, but that's not something uh, they do in France and definitely no dirty bags. Uh, people don't do that. Uh, you usually eat everything because the portion are much smaller, but you're not expected to ask um, for a, a doggy bag when you when you leave. Um, how are we doing with time? We actually just have um, about four minutes until we transition. I didn't want to interrupt you. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's perfect. It's perfect. Um, I actually. Um, Wanna, I want us all to play this game to transition to the French language part. Um, the game is in French, but I'm sure with the background knowledge you have, uh, you'll understand the question. The key thing, and I taught at the Alliance Française for many years, uh, children are just, they just go into it. You know, they, they don't care. Adults are always more wary and uncomfortable and insecure. Um, don't try to translate everything. Just try to understand a few keywords and uh, you know, just go for it, obviously. Uh, don't be shy. I know that uh, French people tend to correct you, but it's changing with the, the new generation. Um, it's changing. So this game will take a little more than two minutes. So I'm not sure if I should just Go for it or? Um... Yes, let's play, let's play. All right, guys, so. Oh, and before we get to playing, um, Mrs. Duncara, I wanted to acknowledge um, Ms. Sarah, who's one of the WCAPS French chapter leaders for joining us today. We sincerely appreciate you for being with us. I don't know if you wanna take 30 seconds just to quickly offer us some greetings. I will um, provide you with that privilege for today's programming. Sure, thank you very much, Maritza. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, uh, depending on who, where you are. So I'm the uh, co-director of the French chapter of WCAPS, and uh, I'm also uh, the chair of the Race Across the Pond initiative, a global initiative from WCAPS. And I'm French, I was born in France, I'm originally from uh, Tunisia, and I have been working quite everywhere. I'm an expert in humanitarian peace and security and I'm very happy to join you today. And it was very nice to see uh, your insight. And yes, <laughs> speaking a lot about bread, cheese, and wine, <laughs> that's very uh, the image of France. <laughs> and that is also what we are, we are enjoying a lot. So yeah, thank you very much, Maritza, for putting up this event. That's really nice. Thank you so much. Or oh, oh, actually using my French, merci, Sarah. Um, all right, Agnes, we'll turn it over to you. We're super excited. Let's play. And as Agnes is getting ready, everyone, if you have your cell phones next to you, it'll be very, very interactive. You can pull that out. Um, you'll see a code will pop up on the screen that you will then enter into your phone so that we can see your live participation. So on your phone, um, you can go to www.cahoots underscore IT, or you can also open up a new browser if you're um, used to functioning with uh, both Zoom and browser up, go to www.cahoot.it. And the game pin is 809-4463. And we'll also post that in the chat box below so that everyone can um, have that as well too. The game is randomly uh, uh, allocating, uh, you know, funky names. I hope people don't. All right. All right, we'll give you guys another 30 seconds. We see four of you guys have logged in so far. I'll give you a 
more seconds. We have five, Prod Bear, just, just funny little usernames here. Hopefully you guys can remember the, the cool names that the yeah. program is assigning everyone. We have Polite Ants, Proud Bear. Don't be shy, guys. Come on. <laughs> all right. We all, oh, this is great. Hi. More folks are coming in. Let's go. Let's go. Or en avant, en avant. <laughs> Bonjour. Bon, bonsoir. <laughs> Bonjour, bonsoir, Pascal. Ça va? Ça va. <laughs> ça fait so, ça, you never, you didn't tell me that you spoke French. I did see the Asian flag there, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have 10 participants. That's it. All right, guys, another 30 seconds. WW dot. Thank you so much to our wonderful program delegate, Whitney. She just put the website for you on the chat box. Oh, okay, Leticia wants us to wait. We'll, we'll wait for you, Leticia. <laughs> All right. All right, I think Leticia just joins. Last call, gang pin, 809-4463. Okay, Ms. Tumikara, I think that is good. We're good to go. You're playing Maritza, right? Yes, I am. I'm flying urchin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to lock the game and we're going to start. So once again, the questions are in French. I will translate when I feel like it's difficult, but really, if you just focus on a few words, you will understand everything. So you just have to find on your phone the right color and shape and click. Okay, quelle est la capitale de la France? I'm not helping with that, with translation. And for those of you that are new, um, there's a timer at the bottom. It's, it's sliding in purple and everyone should have about 10 seconds to answer. Um, How do I? Oops. Sorry, Pascal? How do I respond? Uh, do on I your phone. Me? On your phone? Mm -hmm. you, yes. have, you should have um, the, the shape. So here, on dit que la France a la forme de. The, the oh. shape of France, the country. Remember, we talked about this. Oui, oui. Hexagon, trapez, cercle. So you click on the, the answer. You, you got it? Okay, am I clicking? Um, okay, next. Quel est le fleuve qui traverse Paris? The body oh. of water. Le fleuve qui traverse Paris. Est-ce que c'est la Loire, mm. la Seine, la Garonne ou le Rhin? Um, I am clicking, but... Oh, la Seine. Next. Les Pyrénées. That mount, those mountains we talked about separate France and which other European country? La Suisse, Switzerland, l'Allemagne, Germany, l'Italie, I'm not translating that, ou l'Espagne. Okay. Um, il y a environ habitants en France. Combien d'habitants en France? How many inhabitants? 66 millions, 55, 44, ou 33. I'm not even sure I have the exact number, so you can just take a, a wild guess there. Okay, I'm just gonna skip in one minute already so we don't lose too much time. La fête nationale de la République française. Fête nationale. You know that. 12 octobre, 14 juillet, 7 septembre, 8 octobre. Et okay, everybody answered. Moving along. La devise, le motto de la France. Same thing, we talked about this. I'm going to see who was paying attention. All right, everybody answered. And... Next. Um, quel est l'hymne national? The national anthem, l'hymne national. Okay. 
All right. Um, next, la France est French. France is une monarchie, une république, une dictature, une monarchie parlementaire. You guys understand everything, right? <laughs> um, le symbole, or at least one, un symbole de la France. Quel animal? Okay, everybody got that too. Right? This might be too easy for you. Um, la monnaie, la monnaie actuelle. Est-ce que c'est le franc, l'euro, le dollar ou la roupie? Same thing. Easy. Um, this is more like a inside information maybe you can guess a supermarket a french supermarket which one is which one of these is a french supermarket i think we know these two here all right um où peut -on voir ce tableau? where can we see this painting easy okay everybody answered i'm just gonna skip Almost there. Um, cars. Uh, which of these brand is not French? Quelle marque de voiture n'est pas française? All right. Comment s'appellent les parties de la République française situées en dehors d'Europe? part of the French Republic that are not in Europe. We talked about this. On the map, it was Dom, Tom, Tom as in Territoire d'Outre-mer. I'm helping a little bit. This is a, well, the map is right there. All right. Almost done. La taille de la Tour Eiffel. Anybody remembers? So much information. I don't blame you if you don't. All right. Next. Quel est le nom de ce plat typique? Vol au vent, croissant, fondu ou quiche? Okay. Uh, that might be a tough one. She plays actually uh, in a lot of uh, American movies as well. All right. Next. That's also a tough one. I don't know if you guys are into soccer. <laughs> Just take a guess. That's a tough one. I didn't know him myself. Um, okay. Quel est le nom de ce film? La guerre des boutons, Astérix et Obélix, le fabuleux destin d'Amélie Poulain ou le dîner des cons? Eleven answers. All right. I don't want to waste too much time. Almost there. Parmi ces personnages, lequel n'est pas français? Who is not French among these four people? All right. And final question. Parmi ces villes, laquelle ne se trouve pas en France? Which one is not in France? That's also an easy one.
All right, uh, let's see who is our winner. Okay, number three, Fast Raccoon. Number two, Social Gazelle. And number one, Amazing Bear. Can we, can we see our winner? Who's our I think winner? That, I think the Amazing Bear is Sarah, oh. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who is a uh, Social Gazelle and Fast Raccoon? You can turn on your, um, your mic and let us know who you are. I was a fast raccoon um, and I also actually have to go to class now, but I want to say uh, merci pour les présentations et uh, bonne journée. Have a good day, everyone. Merci. Au revoir. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you. And who was our, our, our other winner here? Hello. It's Fafa. Hi, Fafa. Hi, Fafa. Where from are you joining us from? Tell us how did from you do Ghana. so well? From Ghana. Okay. <laughs> I'm bilingual. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was it um, was it hard the fact that he was in French, or you understood most of the questions? That's a question for everyone. And you guys feel free to unmute to to share your your feedback takeaway. I was responding too fast. <laughs> so I got mixed up <laughs> but actually it was funny even though I'm French so it's not very fair right <laughs> yeah Danielle says it's not too bad Danielle do you want to share with us uh, how much French do you have in your back pocket sure I study French um, for two years in high school and then uh, three more years in college. Um, but it's it's been a while since then. So it, it's, it was nice just to get um, uh, like a, a reintroduction to, to French culture. Nice, fantastic. Well, thank you so much, you guys. We'll officially transition into the language part. So if you, hopefully that exercise gave everyone an opportunity to relax, enjoy, it's a safe space. Um, we'll ask everyone to turn on their mic so you can repeat after um, Ms. Duncara, who will share some of the verbs in the French language, some of the sentences. And so if you're coming here for the first time and don't, know, don't have any French, you at least leave with a couple of phrases. And if you're returning back to just kind of toggle your memory from the past, Hopefully, we will um, reinvigorate your love and interest in learning the French language. Ms. Tunkara, we'll turn over to you for some Francais. Thank you. And, you know, once again, we sh I shared about the culture that I want to reiterate that um, I spent as much time in France as I did in Senegal. And <laughs> so, obviously, this is a very personal um, rendition of what I, uh, you know, what I experience and what I feel like French culture is. Um, also, you know, I've been in here for a while, so I'm sure Sarah might think that some of these things, you know, I kept saying with the younger generation, things are changing. Um, so that's just a little grain of salt, in everything I'm saying. Um, all right. Um, on va parler en français maintenant. Um, it's very really tough to do this. Um, uh, online, but I'm going to try. The other thing that I did a lot at the Alliance Francaise, that, and that's what people do a lot now, is just throw people in there. We don't do the you know, pronunciation and alphabet and the grammar. We literally immerse them with you know, authentic uh, videos and documents. And um, as they go, they grab a little bit more. And then you incorporate a little bit of grammar. But um, if you guys are willing, um, you know, let's start with the, the basic, um, which is the alphabet. I find this easier because you have um, uh, the letter uh, and a word uh, underneath to um, um, a word to illustrate, you know, the way the, the word is said. So I don't know if uh, instead of me uh, doing the talking, if we can just how many participants is that? 14 letters? 14 members, 14 participants. Um, who wants to read the first line of the alphabet here? Just these, maybe A and then the word, B and the word. A volunteer? 
Danielle, do you want to get us started? I'm sorry, I'm putting you on the spot there. <laughs> I see sure. Palmyra also came live. So after Danielle, Palmyra, feel free. All right. <laughs> sure. And thank uh, you, Sara, um, as well, too, for your participation as well, too. We sincerely honor your support as well. Merci. Thank you so much. Merci, Maritza. Merci à toute l'équipe. Merci, Agnès. Et merci à tout le monde. Bonne soirée. Et profitez bien de ce petit, de ce petit alphabet qui a l'air absolument génial. <laughs> Merci Sarah. <laughs> Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. All right, Danielle, over to you. Uh, sure. A avion de balou, c'est citron de dauphin. Okay. So already a few tricks here. O N is on. Mm. And for the next slide, it's O N is on. And as you can see here, the PH is a F. The sound is dauphin. So that's two things already. Um, Palmira, second line. Hey, um, thank you. Um, A, escargot, F, fraise, J, gâteau, H, hibou, I, il, and J, jardin. Okay, not bad. Um, anything tricky here? The, the, the J here. So this is J. And this is G. Yeah. They have to make it complicated, of course. And the sound here is a G, gâteau. Uh, another volunteer for the, the, the next line? Do we have a volunteer? Ava? Sure. Yes. yes. Um, kangaroo, livre, mouton, nuage, ordinateur, and poisson. All right. Thank you. Uh, ensuite, next, un volontaire ou une volontaire. Non? Whitney, do you want to take a stab at it? <laughs> uh oh, okay. Um, qui qui yeah. raison? Soleil, tort. Uh, and vash. Yes. Um, and you know, as a general rule, try to pronounce everything. So he, and this was tricky, good job. And last but not least. <laughs> this is, um, it's two V and that's why it say W, double V. That's how we say it when we recite the alphabet. Anybody wants to try that last line? I could try again. <laughs> okay, Palmira. Um, w. Um, wagon. X. Z. Xylophone. Xylophone. Yes. Um, that's a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> a yacht. It's, yeah, that's a tough one. Et enfin, Z and then zebra. And zebra. Yes, very good. So like I was saying in pronunciation, these are the few tricky sound in French. You know, you have the accent on the E, uh, which make a sound E or E, depending on how the accent is facing. So E cinéma est règle. Um, the E is a E, so we, we do hear it, E. And then you have all these double letters that makes different sounds. So you have the SH here, SH, the K, the N, like in my last, in my first name, Agnès, A, G, N, E, S, and the sound it's G, it's G, it's G, N, and the sound is N. And then you usually don't hear the Counts the consonant at the end of the a word. So, e, you don't say ux, it's just e. Uh, let's practice. I'm going to ask you to spell your name. So, like I said, how do you write your name? Comment on écrit ton nom, s'il te plaît? So, je commence. Agnès, A, G, N, E, S. Qui veut essayer? 
who wants to try to spell the name? Maritza, um, M-A-R-I-T-Z-A, Maritza. Next. Okay. A A V A. Okay, spell your last names, uh, Ava. It's too short. <laughs> Smith. Oui. Um, S M E A H. Super. Next. Palmira. Everybody's going to spell their name. <laughs> Palmira, go. Oh. Palmira, K A L M I R A. Ensuite, Daniel, I'm just going to what I see on my screen. Sure, um, J A N I E L L E. D'accord. Ensuite, um, Fatima. Sorry, guys, I'm putting you on the spot here. Fatima, no? You want to try? No, it's okay. Mia? Hi, Mia. Bonjour, Mia. Bonjour. Um, so, M. M. E. A. E. A. M. E. A. And then my last name, um, W. E. A L. Okay. Is it V <laughs> or W? Is it V or W? V or W? Oh, V. V. D'accord. Super. Uh, Laetitia, tu veux essayer? You want to try? Um, L A T I T I A. Okay. Alors, Laetitia, your second letter is E in English. So in French, E is E, like oh. snail, escargot. A is the one with the, um, the accent. If there was an accent on your E or your E, we would say A. But because there is no accent, it's just E. All right. Any other volunteer? Paul? Fatima? No? Okay. Um, Hello. Someone wants to try? Bonsoir, Fatima. Hello. Hello, Fatima. Do you uh, want to tell your name? I want to try to pronounce my Please. name. Try, try. Okay. Uh, F, mm -hmm. F, R, F, R, K, M, R. All right, you forgot the I. Where is the I? I forgot the I, yeah, yeah, yeah. E, okay. This is F, E, E. F, E, 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 T, E, E, M, A. Super. All right. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, Whitney, right. I think Whitney wants to try. I saw your oh, mic come off. Okay, uh, W H E T N E. Oui, très y. bien. Y. Y. They call it the Y, the Greek Y. That's why it's called Y. Super, we're doing great here. Uh, Paul, no, Paul doesn't want to try. All right. Uh, so that was the alphabet. Now we have the numbers. Um, you know, I guess this you just have to learn. Um, you know, the pattern is pretty simple until 20. After 20, it starts to be a little tricky. Um, but it goes like this. I don't know if we have a volunteer to read. It's boring if I do all the, the work, right? Uh, who wants to read the, the 1 à 10? Okay, yeah. I'll quickly read from 1 through 20, just so we can get into some of the phrases. Yes. So, um, un, one, deux, two, trois, three, quatre, four, mm -hmm. cinq, five, six, six, sept, 
7, mm-hmm. 8, 8, 9, 9, 10, mm-hmm. 11, 11, 12, 12, 13, 13, 14, 14, 15, 15, 15, 16, 16, 16, 17, 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20, 20. Bravo, Maritza. So, yeah, that's it. So these you just have to learn, I guess. Um, these are the day of the week. So, aujourd'hui, today, quel jour on est? What day it is today? Who just wants to go ahead and tell me what day? On est quel jour? Aujourd'hui, on est. So, aujourd'hui, on est. And then the day of the week. Miss Ava, I see Miss Ava's mic is off. You want to try? Yes. Aujourd'hui, jeudi. Aujourd'hui, on est, we are. Aujourd'hui, on est, jeudi. You want to give a try? You want to try the number? So it's, you just have to add, add them up. So it's 25, like in French. Ah. And Donc, we, aujourd'hui, on est. Aujourd'hui, on est. Jeudi. 25. 25 mars. 25 mars. Super. Aujourd'hui, on est jeudi 25 mars. D'accord? These are the months. Uh, same thing. I mean, some of them are very uh, <clears throat> similar to English, but not necessarily. Um, so one of the things that you want to know when you're speaking to a French person is to know if you're in the informal or formal mode. And it's important. Um, at the beginning for the first conversation, you are on the formal mode. And one of the main thing is this tu and this vous. This is you in English, whether it's tu or vous, it's you. But when you don't know someone, you, you do the vous, which is actually plural in grammar, but that's just something you should know. So this is the two different register. If it's someone you know, you're gonna say bonjour. No, if it's someone you don't know, I, I mix this up. The formal, the formal is bonjour. Salut is more like the informal one, okay? But this is one of the tricky things. When you start a conversation in French with someone, you're probably gonna have to use the vous and then move on to the two. Okay, um, these are the f- a few ways you can greet someone. Um, why don't we just pretend that you're meeting someone and you saying, good morning, hello, uh, my name is, uh-uh. so, bonjour, je m'appelle, my name is, je m'appelle. So, we're gonna have someone ask, Bonjour, comment vous appelez-vous? Hello, what's your name? And the answer, bonjour, je m'appelle, and give the answer. Um, Mia et Daniel, let's go. <laughs> um, comment vous appelez-vous? Uh, je m'appelle Daniel. Yes. Um, Fatima et Laetitia? Comment vous appelez-vous? Comment vous appelez-vous? Appelez vous. I can't. Je m'appelle. Je m'appelle. Je m'appelle. And and your first name. Oh, my first name is Fatima. Fatima. My name is uh, I need the alphabet. You need the alphabet? <laughs> or you can just repeat, you know. Comment vous appelez-vous? Je m'appelle, je m'appelle Fatima. Okay? Um, Laetitia, you want to answer the question? Bonjour, comment vous appelez-vous? Um, je m'appelle Laetitia. Bonjour, Laetitia. Um, who else? Ava, bonjour. 
Comment vous appelez-vous Anka. Oh. You mute, Ava. Je m'appelle Ava. Bonjour, Ava. So that's, that's a way to stop. Um, grammar in French is really tricky. There is so many exceptions. Um, these are the pronouns, um, you know, I, you, he, she, um, we, you, and they. Uh, obviously, we have the big question of the gender, which does not necessarily exist in English. Um, I put an example here. In English, we have my. My dress, my children, uh, my bread, everything is my. In French, if you're referring to something masculine, it's mon. If you're referring to something feminine, it's ma. If it's plural, it's me. And to make it even more complicated, if the word after this starts with a vowel, you have to use mo, whether it's feminine or masculine. And same with the the, which in English is the for everything. In French, you say le if it's masculine, la if it's feminine, and le if it's plural. So these, these are a few of the things that can be tricky. Okay. Um, Let's, let's have you try this. So as you can see, there is a question and then there's the answer, it's color coded. Um, the answer to the pink question is the pink circle. And it's basically the kind of question you would ask to someone when you meet them, except for their age maybe, which is the second one. So we already did a, the first one a little bit. So comment tu t'appelles? And we are on an informal mode here. We're not using the formal vous. Comment tu t'appelles? Je m'appelle Marie, we already did that. Où est-ce que tu habites? Where do you live? Le verbe, the verb habiter, and the answer, j'habite à Lyon. So j'habite à, it's the intro sentence before the town. So if someone comes to me and say, où est-ce que tu habites? I will answer, j'habite à New York. Okay, let's try that. Um, Bonjour Ava, où est-ce que tu habites? J'habite à Washington DC. D'accord. Bonjour Palmira, où est-ce que tu habites? Bonjour, j'habite à Maryland. D'accord. Bonjour Mia, où est-ce que tu habites? Mm. Um, J'habite à California. En Californie, d'accord. À, the à, you have to give the town. If it's a state, it's another preposition. Oh, so j'habite à Palmdale. À Palmdale. Sinon, c'est j'habite en Californie. Uh, bonjour, Daniel. Où est-ce que tu habites? Bonjour, uh, j'habite à Ventura. D'accord. Um, do I see the other people on my screen? Bonjour, Fatima. Où est-ce que tu habites? Come on, Fatima, you can do it. J'habite à, and the name of the town. Laetitia, you want to give it a try? Bonjour, Laetitia. Où est-ce que tu habites? J'habite à Tuscaloosa. D'accord. Paul, tu veux participer? You want to participate, Paul? OK. So that was good. Um, le temps, the weather, these are just sentences. So if you want to, uh, par exemple, I will say, à New York, il fait, you just have to try to identify the weather right now. So this is obviously, it's raining. Il pleut, il fait beau, il fait mauvais, il fait chaud, il grêle, il y a du brouillard, il y a du soleil, il y a des nuages. So I'm going to say, à New, York, à New York, il y a du soleil. Palmira, quel temps fait-il? Uh, en Maryland, il y a des nuages. D'accord. Mia, quel temps fait-il? 
California, il fait frais. Frais? <laughs> il fait frais. This one, frais. Frais. Ça est chilly. D'accord. Daniela, Daniel, quel temps fait-il? À Ventureil, il y a des nuages. Il y a des nuages, d'accord. Euh, Ava, quel temps fait-il à Washington? À Washington, il y a du soleil. Il y a du soleil. Euh, Quelqu'un d'autre veut participer? Someone else wants to try? Excuse me, uh, Miss Tunkara. Uh, oui. Cinq minutes. Cinq minutes. <laughs> wow, all right. Thank you. Uh, okay, I'm just going to go straight to this. I don't know if you guys can read. It's a little, um, it's a little blurry, but we have to try this. You have to go to a restaurant and order. So this is, I made it very simple. The server is going to come to you and ask the same question. Est-ce que je peux vous aider? Can I help you? So I'm going to be the server and I'm going to say, est-ce que je peux vous aider? And you're going to answer, oui, je voudrais. And then you're going to pick something on the menu. The article is there. The way to use it is there. You just have to pick something. Est-ce que je peux vous aider? Oui, je voudrais des frites. D'accord? Who wants to try? So, on est, on est au Café Français. Je suis le serveur. Je viens vous voir. Bonjour. Je vais m'adresser à Ava. Bonjour. Est-ce que je peux vous aider? Oui, je voudrais le poisson. D'accord. Tout de suite, madame. Euh, Almira, est-ce que je peux vous aider? Oui, je voudrais une salade. Très bien. Euh, Mia, est-ce que je peux vous aider? Oui, je voudrais des frites. Des frites? Très bien. Euh, Daniel, est-ce que je peux vous aider? Euh, oui, je voudrais le gâteau. D'accord. Euh, Maritza, est-ce que je peux vous aider? Oui, je voudrais le poisson. Le poisson. Euh... Who else? Fatima, you want to try? Fatima, est-ce que je peux vous aider? I scared Fatima. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thank you guys. You guys are, you know, you're giving it a try. That's the main thing in language. You just have to be brave. Uh, thank you so much. I hope uh, this was uh, uh, helpful, entertaining, a little informative, and um, thank you, uh, Maritza, for organizing and thanks for your help. Yeah, thank you so much, um, Mrs. Tunkara, for the amazing presentation. Um, thank you for all of our WCAPS members for joining us as well today. Um, as as we mentioned earlier, this program started because our fellow WCAPS members expressed interests in different cultures and languages. And so in addition to the many um, events and workshops, seminars and conferences that WCAPS offers across its 15 plus working groups um, and over five chapters across the globe, um, we wanted to ensure that we created programming that gave an opportunity to learn um, and also connect with all other like-minded individuals within the organization. So we hope that you'll stay in touch with us. Um, we will bring back French again. It's one of our, our popular ones. Stay tuned for Spanish, Arabic, and Russian and Mandarin as well. In the next couple of months, um, we'll share those as it becomes available. Um, but before we wrap up, I wanted to give everyone an opportunity to give their quick reflections from today's programming, and then we'll turn back over to Ms. Tungara for her final um, tip that she's giving to all of us as we continue in our language and cultural journey. So Miss Ava, how did you like today's programming? I did. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. And I feel inspired to um, continue between our sessions. So thank you very much, Agnes. Thank you, Ava, for joining us. Thank you. Anything that you learned today that was like, oh my goodness, an aha moment, your takeaway for today? Um, I appreciated Agnes's advice to just kind of jump in and be brave and do it anyway. I detected a couple of mistakes that I made um, 
during the process. But what what's really encouraging is that I took your advice and jumped in anyway, and I learned a lot despite the mistake. So um, hopefully we won't make those again. <laughs> Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Ms. Ava, for joining us. Um, Paul or Fatima, you want to give your takeaways or reflections from today's programming? And thank you for, for joining and trying it out. We hope that you'll come back for future programming. Okay, Ms. Danielle, your reflection for today's programming. Sure, I, I really like the, the Kahoot that was run. Um, it made me realize how uh, how many French movies I, I've yet to watch. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Any any reflections about the language portion? I saw that you were actually pretty good in that department. Sorry. Oh, no, no, no. Just wanted your oh. quick reflections on language. I know that you did outstanding in that department as well. Oh, it, it was a really nice refresher. I think um, getting used to the the convert the like conversational questions um, was something um, that that I haven't practiced in a while. I've just been mainly like reading French books, so it was nice to get back to the basics. Um, awesome! Thank you so much, Miss Mia. Any reflections from today's programming? Um, I had a lot of fun. Uh, definitely will work on my French <laughs> more. Um, but it was definitely, I'm in the beginning stages of learning. So it was nice to, you know, go back and hear numbers and stuff again, because I feel like when you keep learning, it, it kind of was away from that. So it was nice to get a refresher. Nice. Any cool culture takeaways? Any like, aha, I didn't know that, or that was cool to, to see? Shockingly, I knew that soccer player. <laughs> I got, I guessed correct. So that was a problem. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Ms. Palmira, how about yourself and your reflections and takeaway? Thanks, Maritza. Um, yes, it was really fun. I had a really good time. I did join a little bit late in the beginning, so missed some of the cultural um, aspects, but that was one of my favorite things. I have done French in school in the past. So I'm definitely wanting to get back in and get my conversation piece much better because um, I think I get the nuances of like numbers and conjugation and things, but having conversations is always an issue just because I don't get to practice a lot. So this is going to be fun. Thank you so much, Agnes. You're welcome. Thank you, Palmea. And our wonderful program delegate from WCAP SCAD. Miss Whitney Thomas, any reflections? I know you've attended almost all of our GAD lingos from last year. So any reflections for today's programming? Uh, it was awesome. I just realized I don't have the confidence as much as I used to, even though I've been studying French for a long time. I also didn't know about this writer, Aimé Césaire, or something like that. Like, I'm going to look into that. So that was fascinating. Check him out. <laughs> Awesome. Um, Ms. Agnes, any departing words for us? Um, well, thank you, everyone. Thanks, Whitney, for the help. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to end on that. She didn't know Amy Césaire. And that's the message, you know, French opened so many doors. French is not just France and Paris. There is so much uh, cultural literature out there in French, you can use it in any context. And so if you're learning it, if you're planning on learning it, it's really not a waste. And the other thing I like about just being bilingual is having uh, a different view of the world. You know, that idea that not everybody thinks the same is just so much better for um, empathy, compassion, and I was gonna say world peace to be, but really it, it's, um, you know, just traveling and having an open mind and going and discovering uh, other cultures and other country. I think it's uh, um, it's the key to uh, you know making making this place a better world. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Thanks for your courage and thanks for for trying. That's the key in language. You, know, you just have to go for it. And once again, French people used to be very stern about their vocabulary and the pronunciation. It's so different now with the young generation. So yeah, go for it. And thank you again for the opportunity. 
Thank you, everyone. Merci votre participation. Um, <laughs> please stay in touch with us, GodWG at WCAPS.org, and make sure you sign up for WCAPS upcoming conference next week. I am Maritza Donis. I serve as the GAD Working Group Chair for the Women of Color Advancing Peace and Security. Continue to stay safe and take good care, everyone. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Thank you. Au revoir. <laughs>